Hello, and welcome to the DS Book Club, where we talk about some Dungeons and Dragons and how you can put it into your campaigns. Whoa, with me, as seamless. Exactly. With well, until you said that. With me, oh. <laughs> with me is as ever, and more than I've ever been on the show. The creator, the lexicon, oh, no. the epitome oh, no. that is the 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 leader, our eminent leader of the DS Book Club. <laughs> He's now gone. Oh screen. crap, I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> is Fiona. How are you, Fiona? Hello, Hamilton. I'm very well, thank you. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry yes. Christmas. Merry yes. Christmas. Oh, we did say, oh, we did say we were going to put Christmas stuff on too late now. Um, oh, but crap. I have a Christmas jumper. Yeah, it's it's fine. This is what and we're looking around for Christmas stuff. It is officially Christmas. Um, so, I didn't prepare. Yes. I didn't prepare. I was meant to have no. a Christmas. I don't have a Christmas hat. My my Christmas jumper's all the way up there. I can't bother getting up for it, so <laughs> No, I have my X Men t shirt. <laughs> Does that count? Oh, I love that. Oh, it's I love Xmas. that. I, I love that. I love the yellow of that. So Should I just, I just wear it like this? It's like that. It's Perfect. Christmas. Perfect. It's Xmas. Xmas. So, That's how Xmas. it works. Yeah, fine. That's it. Uh, yeah, Hamilton, that. do you have any festive traditions or anything like yes, that? Yes, I do. do. I do. I am um, such a classic white male. I watch Die Hard every year. <laughs> <laughs> over 25 white man i watch i hard i'm not saying that that's only for them i'm just saying that it seems to be a, cu- a cultural shift for uh, that, that sort of and stereotyping of, of us yeah. no no i do i i get the christmas tree up as early as possible i always watch a n die hard uh once a year i watch pretty much all the harry potters over christmas Aww. and and if I can fit Lord of the Rings in, I'll get Lord of the Rings probably in in the same time. They're my sort of Christmas movies, uh, as well as I oh yeah, Home Alone. I just like watching movies. Oh, Home Christmas Alone movies. Is so good. I love all Christmas movies. So like, yeah, anything that has any. I, I even I like Love Actually. I've already watched that once. I'll probably oh, watch it another yes. time. Oh, oh um, I love Love. With Love Actually, again, side note, if on the DVD they had yeah. like the extra scenes. Yeah. And I remember, is it, is it Richard Curtis? He goes, uh, there's a scene at the end in the airport and he goes, we had to use a stunt actor to do some bits of it as he's running through and he's doing flips and stuff. Mm. And you watch it and you're like, it's clearly like a child, a child, and then a man doing yes. flips and then a child. And it's just, I mean, obviously we didn't see this on the screen, but I was just like going, this does not. How no one could get away with this. I I highly recommend watching outtakes and the extra scenes in Love yeah. Actually because they are fantastic. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to so watch that. Okay, that's yeah, I'm gonna do that. So much fun. I think I've got. I've yeah. got actually. No, I have got it on DVD. Yeah, so I will do that. Yeah, I I think it's it's law in every British household to have that on DVD. Yeah, so. yeah no, literally. I think I had it twice on DVD when I lived at home. So yeah, it's one of those. It's like the Spice Girls album. <gasps> oh yeah, that, I was gonna say that's at home. <laughs> Everyone has that at their home. Like I got given it that year that the Spice Girls came out. I came. I think I got it like three times for Christmas that year. Really? I think. It was like, yeah, so ridiculous. So I had. Right. Oh, you, you got your you got your life spiced up. I did. I spiced up my life. And then I chucked away one, and then two became what? No, the, oh, no, that, no, sorry, boo, no. Boo, boo. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, anyway, what about you? What are your Christmas traditions? Um, so I'm sure I do have them. It's bit, to be fair, it has been a little while since I've had Christmas at home. But oh, okay. one thing me and my sister did start doing mm. was that, you know how you know just again through various years and stuff, you always get presents of clothing, right? You always get some socks. You'll get. Yeah. Uh, a jumper, etc. So me and my sister came up with a game whereby when you unwrap a piece of clothing, you put it on instantly over whatever you're wearing and in the order you get it. So you could unwrap socks uh, and then put them on straight away, uh, slippers and then more socks. Yes. Or you could put like a... a oh, yeah, I love so, this. So you could put like leggings on, but then you might... Uh, like if we do in our household, maybe you get pants. Put pants on over the leggings, you know. And then at the Superman end, style. Exactly, and then at the end we have uh, we take pictures and it's like who wore it better, and it's our Christmas outfit for. I love <laughs> the... it. That is great. Oh, I want to steal so, that idea actually. It's it's great fun, like because obviously you get like stuff like scarves and hats mm. and glasses, yeah. you know, like, all yeah. that sort of stuff comes out at Christmas. So I, I just think it's a, a fun little thing. You're like, oh, quick, put it on, put it yeah. on, you know. Even, even though the points don't matter or anything like that, but yeah, that's what we came up with. I think a couple of Christmases ago, and we've we've done it. 
every year since, like, oh, on and great. off, depending like on stuff. It. So that, that's always quite fun. The um, one I used to have with clothing one, and, th- and I had to grow up, and it really annoyed me, was that I... And I got... We used to go stay at a friend's house for Christmas because it was just me and my mum So for a long time. So our friends, we used to go to theirs for Christmas because my, my grandparents passed away when I was quite young, So and I don't have much of an immediate family apart from her. So um, anyway, we used to do that. And But even when I was these people's houses, I had this rule, and I'd wear... And they were clean, so I would wear pyjamas all day yeah. yeah so i'd put i'd oh. wake up i'd have a shower and put on right. clean pajamas so i wouldn't right. be in the pajamas that i went to bed in but i would put no. them on and have a, and a dressing gown and that would be my i'd be like okay i am not changing all day no because that's what i did as a kid and this is the only way i can feel still feel like a kid on christmas so oh. everyone else would like be properly dressed and i would just be there at the dinner table wearing pajamas <laughs> and until i was probably about 20 L- l- later than the number that you probably want to believe <laughs> where no, I'd literally I... be sitting there with all these adult dish people and I'm still in my pyjamas because I'm like this is my rule okay I'm sorry who gets properly dressed over Christmas that feels that feels like now we do right now I you know like, I've taken on uh, oh. my partners and stuff like that and we used to go to when we started having to then go to um, my partner's family they would everyone would put on like shirts and the would be dressed up smartly for Christmas so I'd have to put mm-hmm. on like a shirt and a Christmas jumper and would not be in my pyjamas all day so That's, I, my heart breaks a little bit inside but um, I know I know there is some cultures where on New Year's Eve you do get a new uh, set yes. of pajamas. So. Oh, so that, that's yeah. Take so that like you you would get it, yeah, because then and you're like you're ready for Christmas because you've got your new Christmas pajama sets. Yeah. You know, well winter so. starts at Christmas, so you need pajamas because it's cold in this country. So you know, and heating is expensive in this country, unlike in America yeah. where you get it as, cheap. So as as we found out over, <laughs> over the last year, well. Hamilton, enough of our Sorry. <laughs> and traditions and wearing pyjamas over Christmas. What are we talking about today? What is our topic of choice? Our topic of choice is really a year in review. We're just going to yeah. talk about the things that we've enjoyed and things that we're looking forward to a bit, but more like what we've enjoyed about the year of 2021 in D&D, really. Not, mm. There's a lot of stuff that we probably want to forget about 2021. <laughs> and so let's just look at the fantasy world that is nice and happy and uh, talk, about, talk about that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think obviously we, we when we say like obviously things about D and D, it doesn't have to be you know just the books have come out. Obviously, mm. I know wizards have been like pumping out oh, so yes. many books and so many guides, and obviously at the M's Guild have got all the stuff yep. as well. But I, I think definitely for me when I look back, obviously I've made so many happy connections. We met uh, yes. for the first time. That I know is, it doesn't fit. That is one of the like things on my list. You've stolen <gasps> my list. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Uh, yeah, not that um, you know we've got. Uh, we've got obviously Dragon's Jewel, we've got all this, yeah. all this sort of thing. So it actually is one of those things where it's like, actually, there's so much to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, what, look, look back on and go, wow, we've actually, we've done it. We've made it. Yeah. And also we had a good time doing it. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very excited to talk about this topic. Yeah. And yeah. Well, why don't you start then? Why don't you start I will. with your first on your list of things that you found I fantastic will. about this year? I will. Well, whilst you think of a second one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got more to say about that. So I, that's, that's fantastic. Sorry, I've got cool. More to say about. So uh, I did. I did. So I, when I wrote this uh, earlier today, I was like, Ooh, "What could it be?" And I will say, because I always, well, I used to say it quite a lot. My favourite book that has come out recently is uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft because <laughs> I. No crap. I know. Whoa. <laughs> what? You've not made Spoiler. that obvious. You know, it's been no. very subtle. Your your love of that that book. Exactly, because I, you know, I, I do love horror, and it came out at a, at a really good time. It was very interesting to talk to people about it because. You know, people do like horror campaigns and they do like being scared and stuff like that. And I thought what was so good about this book is that not only did it have like a great starter uh, uh, game for mm. it, so the House of Lamont, which was like it's a haunted house, but also you can have seances and mm. there's like three different adventures in it, so you could play it differently each time, like a video game. Um, but what I really loved is that if you were like me, like I watch a lot of horror games. Uh, I watch a lot of TV shows and lots of films and play video games or horror, but I'm not very good about what are the tropes of individual things. I'm like, oh, that scares me. Oh, that scares me, etc. And what I loved about uh, Van Richten is that it was like, here are the genres of horror. Here is folk horror. Here is cosmic horror. Here is occult horror. And it just sort of laid it out. And it was so beautiful the way it did it for DMs because it's like stuff like um, occult horror or folk horror where it's like if you've ever watched something like uh, The Wicker Man or yeah. Midsummer or something, it's, like, it's around a community mm. uh, who do 
uh, have a strange way of life that is uh, very different to the norm that the adventurers have. But you could play it so that, you know, the adventurers come in, you know, trample in, and they go, oh, this is not right, we'll go kill that, that whatever the being is that you're worshipping. Then they're like, no, you idiot, you've angered it, we were living in fear, and now you've ruined it, rather than an evil thing around. So there's just all these different ways yeah. of coming from it. And I just, it was just beautifully written, beautifully drawn, and of course, with Van Richten as well, it introduced this idea of, uh, even though it was there before, I will say, this domains of dread. And mm-hmm. it had loads of different ideas and like all these different things. There's a, a domain where it's just a ghost train. Obviously, you've got uh, Barovia, so Curse of Strahd. You've got uh, Wands of Dreams and all, all these sort of things. And it just, as a source book, really digs into like what makes horror yeah. interesting and why people want to play it. So I, that's why it's one of my picks. When it came out, I read it cover to cover and I was like, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so. I still haven't brought the courage to read it. Like, it's just not, because it's not my kind of thing. But It's not your thing. I, but I really do want to read it. It's just like, I just need to be, I just need to do it probably in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely one of those things where I think you need to be in the right mood for it, like yeah, with any it, sort of genres and stuff. And mm. for me, I it's one of those things because... It was a spooky season. It is three sixty-five days for me uh, all year round. So I'm I'm always happy for that. But I, it has so many good ideas and ways to uh, talk about horror. Like here mm. are some ghostly settings. Here are some ways to do it. And it just again a bit like Salt Marsh in a way, where the yeah. ghost of Salt Marsh was all about seafaring and how to mm. make villages and coastal adventures and stuff like that a little bit more flavoursome and mm. have this environment stuff. That's what uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Uh, did as well, and I just yeah. and and I will say again, just because I'm remembering off the top, they had some really cool ones for like um, uh, wanderers through the mist. This idea of NPCs, and so you had obviously people from Curse of Strahd, but also the uh, the Mayweather Fox Groves, these two twins who were like, oh gosh, hello, oh we're g- we're finding out ghosts, aren't we, dear? Yes, we are, you know. And it's like uh, this idea that you could play two twins who are f- big ghost hunters, but very foppish and very Victorian. And I, I was love like, that. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, yeah I love really yeah. Cool. May were the fox groves. My my favourite two NPCs. Oh, I love that. I really like that. I I, I might just give it a bit of a read. I'm gonna have, do it. Have a look again. I know it's one of those things where it's not. As soon as someone goes, I'm into horror. You go, oh god, no. Like, no, I don't, I don't do that. To... It's just it's just like no. it's just it's just because like it's just not my thing so it's just like for me I'm, I love people being passionate about anything so I will never st- I will never go I love hearing people talking about these things yeah. and actually it's much more interesting like I really enjoyed your uh, your uh, episode <laughs> I can't even think of that word about it but it's just it. but it's like I'm much more it's that kind of thing where I'm like to actually read it alone yeah. <laughs> just like oh know. yeah it's just kind Definitely. of freak, freaky Definitely. stuff but no I'm worries. sure it's fine Sure, it's fine. Well, all right, Hamilton. What's your okay. first pick? What are, what have you got that you're like? This has been my year, 2021. <laughs> well, I think if we're gonna stick on, we're gonna stick with the theme that you're talking about, which is like the best book for the year. For sure. me, mm-hmm. I actually think it has to be Fizzbands. It was a time. It was it was a tie with Fizzbands. Yeah, exactly. It was a tie between Witchlight and Fizzbands. I really love Witchlight. I think what that brought to the game was really great but Mm -hmm. if i was going to be honest with like what have i read and gone like this has given me so much stuff that i'm going to use as a person who runs a show called dragon's jewel it's obviously going to be fizz bands it's like duh and i was like i said you know it's one of those things like i should be different i should try and think around it and really i loved the the bob along which like but the one that i wanted that i read and was just like okay that's going in that's going in that's going in that's going in yeah 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 yeah. more of that please and you know i was just making notes consistently yeah the ghost book one another close second because that one i was like i love this such a great idea and Spelljammer we did recently again loved yes. it but fizzbands just was just flying off the page great sort of law in ideas just yes. I've written two seasons for Dragon's Jewel based off 50% of the Dragon's Jewel things have just come from this, the like backstory stuff that I've loved. So mm-hmm. it's, and, and it was, it was a really interesting take on mm. doing a source book. I think, yes. you know, take, uh, taking the, the grandest character, the monster that is, we've talked about this when we're doing it, that's in D&D, it's the one of the names <laughs> in there, but yeah. they, they did it real justice and mm. gave us, um, gave us everything basically law mm. stats um items feats things everything it was a proper old-fashioned not i don't mean mm. like old-fashioned D, but just like a proper epitome of source book 
here is yes. stuff like you were talking about with your Van Richtens, I guess, like there was a theme yes. of horror and we're going to talk all about horror and give you a whole encompassing. It's not just Absolutely. a few adventures and the same with um, the drag, the, the, the Fist Bands book. So yeah, yeah, for me personally, great one. I, I absolutely agree. I think we may be seeing more of a trend towards themed source books that aren't mm. necessarily like um, uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything or Tasha's yes. Guide to Everything. Uh, like I know we're going to have uh, the updated sort of Volo's Guide to Monsters as Monokainen mm. presents and we've also got yeah. Monokainen's Tome of Foes and stuff like that. And I think yeah. this was just interesting because those were obviously like, here is a voice, it is a character. Yeah per se uh, and then this is like like you said uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft Van Richten's not really writing it per se like he's yeah. he's in it but it is like here are all the horror stuff that you need to know mm. and then like you said like Fizzband is in it but it's also it's all about dragons because you know it, it is all sort of more uh, shaped or uh, there's a yeah. definitely like this, you know I, I can definitely see like yes whilst Van Richten is for me Fizzband yeah. is for you you know like, yes. and I, I well, definitely it. like Whereas I can imagine like stuff like Xanathars and Tash and stuff like it's like oh I, remember I bought interesting. I bought Xanathars as one of the first books outside of the main three that I bought mm-hmm. because I wanted the additional um, I wanted the additional subclasses and I wanted to get the uh, the stuff on like downtime. But when yeah. you read it, it's just like an amalgamation of just what? Like, why is that next to that? That doesn't. This is just so I can get. This yeah. is literally a book like this needs to get out here. Let's shove this all together. It didn't really yeah. make cohesive sense. Yeah. The other thing that you picked up on, though, was like Van Richten's like gave you this overview, gave you the all these books they've done this year, and something that I think we want to talk about more later was there's just so much more about role playing. You know, they're bringing mm. in how you play the game. I, we talked about this on the on a few of the shows that actual players are becoming much more uh, actor heavy and sort of uh, role play heavy, and therefore they are just giving us ways to become better DMs in the sort of more like how to create theatre, how you know, giving us yes. like. Tropes. This is here are the tropes of how you make a, a horror thing. A story. Or, exactly. Yeah. And this is how you can play dragons in multiple ways. Not being tropish in the sense of like here's a stereotype. They just give you, no. just give you archetypes of things mm. that you can work from. That then, but being very open, like in the sense that like you know yes. when they talked about the dragons, they said you know a red dragon might, you know one red dragon might be huge hulking bestial sort of creature when, yeah. when another red dragon could still be ancient but like a very lithe fluid serpentine creature and mm. how that might and one could be very primal and one could be very you know well informed and and this, yeah. this sort of like i don't know it's very much opening us opening up the the game to 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 more yeah. creativity and giving you more of that sort of uh creative um background <laughs> or something yeah. yeah no i i completely agree actually because there's always that thing where it's like we want you to write it's, it's, as, a, as a dm sometimes i really struggle for like inspiration and stuff and it can literally be a, a sentence or a, or a section and i just go oh perfect i've got it but it's that sort of thing where you don't want to be like write loads of stuff for people just to be like take and go because that's not the way people learn that's not the way people create stories it's giving them the starting point to be like here's some ideas and i i do think i know we always talk about like wizards love their tables they do but they give you enough options to be like here's i don't know a d8's worth of options or a d12's etc but actually um you could just be like you could roll it you can take it or you'd be like oh i like that idea but change something else and i think they always say that it's like here is some things that we say and i think mm-hmm. that's the thing we, they are making it clearer they are sort of putting out this stuff this content and a lot of content very good very well written content but it does feel like compared to other places so like mm-hmm. we've looked at he said ghost walk and spell Gemma, those feel very much like here is the setting um mm-hmm. and here are the rules for that setting yeah and you can you can tweak them a little bit but it, they're sort of rigid yeah. or they're sort of like they're sort of like this whereas and yeah, I think the, that the, sort of well. describes the difference in in like we come to those now and go like well we can change the rules of these things like literally we were doing the spell job we're like well we could just change how air works and we've yeah. got that because and you know, that's also just cultural and social I don't think yeah. um, uh, age you know like growing up I guess for want of a better term but also mm-hmm. just like the dogma of of D and D is so much more f- open and fl- and sort of a, a yeah. fluid in the in your interpretation of the rules. They're very much clear that yeah. you they're not like old school Games Workshop and old school TSR where it's like these are the rules and you play it. And you can see that in it's, and, you know unfortunately you see that in some people on the internet. You can find the people that are dogmatic and and you know if it works, you know, there are rules there for a reason. They make a game work sometimes, but. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's yeah. uh, there's definitely it, yeah, I love that move just to being just like you can do what you want because it's yeah. not real. <laughs> you it, know? it also it also feels like with that just jumping off that it becomes mm. less like a board game where the yes. rules are kind of set mm. to uh, let's do a collaborative game where the players can go yes. I want to use a spell like this and your exactly. your DM can it can have the, the the freedom to go yeah cool let's try it rather yeah. than going oh I think you'll find in the book it says yeah. this like you know you you the DM has the permission to be like yes and or yeah. no but or yeah. you know that sort of thing and I think that's so important for like you said the streaming and creating stories which are not just one sided but also just thought, having fun at home as well oh Absolutely. And it's yeah. not, like I said, it's not just the DM story. And that's, the, I think mm. that's the key thing here. That's the reason, one of the reasons I started the book club is that here's a lot of lore here. But if you just recreate a world where it's just you in it, it's a bit boring. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got to be able to have the players that come in and then let them choose what they want and, and change the world. Because that's what makes the really engaging little yeah. bits of story and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, good choice, Hamilton. I completely agree. Fizz bands! Fizz bands! Fizz bands! <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, so, what's your second choice then? My second one, if I look it up. Oh yes. Well, actually, it's very similar to one you just you sort of mentioned, Wild Beyond the Witchlight. I actually went for the Domains of Delight supplement, yes. mm. the Five E that came out a little bit after mm. Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So, again, I know we've said this several times, but Wild Beyond the Witchlight introduces this idea of domains of delight mm. and introduces this domain of prismere and this I, again it's almost like a the sort of the flip side of a domain of dread and that mm. idea because there's so many domains of dread because everyone's like oh well, it's gonna be horrible and, hor and scary here and there hadn't been much on the feywild per se until mm. this point and now they're like we can go and create our own domains and so yeah. when we created it ourselves like we're like again very straightforward very interesting and how we came up with, with, with what we created it was actually just like Actually, that sounds like a really fun place to be, and yeah. it was just you know over over an hour just us working things out, coming up with the archway that rules mm. over this domain and stuff. And I I do predict, well I hope in a way that there'll be a similar source book in maybe a couple of years' time where it's more Feywild yeah. uh, domains of delight that comes out because obviously Van Richten's done so well, and I do think the the Wild Beyond the Witchlight has done very well as a yeah. as an introduction to sort of thing because obviously we've had all this mm. horror, we've had the combat stuff, and now it's like. Who wants to go to a carnival with fairies? And everyone's like, me, I do. Yeah. I want to have fun, you know. And I just, yeah. The, so I, I always think the supplements that they do on DM Guild for extra light stuff, they're always, uh, most of the time, I would say, there's definitely mm. one that I'm like mm, not so sure about. But they, they are interesting. Mm. They give you ideas as a DM, and you can just work so much into it. And and I just felt this domains of delight was so creative and so interesting. That I thought, yeah. I had, look, I mean, that. I really enjoyed that episode. I had so much yeah. fun creating that one, and. Uh, we need to finish putting that up on the DM skill for ourselves. We need to I do know. that. I I need to write the flavor text. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, but yes, and so yeah, no, and I think the the whole point of these extra life things is really good that they have allowed uh, Wizards of the Coast to offer us up additional content quite easily with other writers, mm -hmm. and I think that's yes. been really good. And as I said, yeah, I loved the Domains of Delight one that we did. It was so much fun creating that, and. Um, but yeah, the other one that we looked at, I think we're going to talk about later, I think, as well. But they are a really great resource. And of course, they're also doing really good things for charity. But yeah. I'm the thing that I was going to say was, what I haven't checked is who, how many people are streaming World on the Witchlight? Because I've only mm. seen a couple out there in my mind, but compared to... Curse of Strahd. Curse of Strahd. <laughs> you know, or even House of Lament. There are a lot of House of Lament. I mean, I know you've done one and I'm, yep. you know, and I'm not saying like, oh, you're just doing what everyone's doing, but I mean like, no, but I saw that D&D uh, &D Beyond did a House of Lament uh, series as well, um, mm -hmm. uh, which Melly, who was on our show, uh, was part of. And uh, and it's, yeah, I just, I just, I, I, I'd like to do some research on that. It's just something that I'd be interested yeah. to know actually, because I think that would be a good metric of what's taking off because the amount of people that are like, I want to do a Strixhaven, like mm. myself, you know, I yeah. want to do World Wild Beyond the Witch Light, but I'm kind of like, it's not as much of a thing as like, okay, I want to do my Mean Girl Strixhaven. <laughs> like, mm. that I want to do. Like, and all the yeah. Dragon's Jewel stuff that I want to do with Fizzbands. But yeah. I don't know, it's just kind of, I'd just be interested to see. That's all. I don't you know, have I an opinion anyway. But. I, I think that's a very good point because I know. When I was reading about the uh, Wild mm. Beyond the Witchlight and stuff like that, I was like, oh, I'm very excited by it and stuff like mm. that. And you're right. I, I will say this, you know, touch wood, I've not 
seen any things about like we're gonna do mm. a fey inspired thing yeah and i wonder if that's because maybe there is a, a view saying like well dungeons and dragons should be fighty fighty it's gonna be uh yeah. you know fight dungeons or it's gonna be in space or it's gonna be this whereas you go a carnival and uh, a, a plane where people are very in touch with their emotions maybe that doesn't appeal to people i don't know because yeah. obviously I, don't know. You... I doubt i doubt that's the case though because i think really it's the other know. way around more because people in streaming are getting i fight you know we've as a streamer you know combat is hard mm. to manage oh. and having been in i don't know if i talked about when i talked about me playing an evil character on that villains we were playing said, narrative yes. combat and so mm. that worked so well and kyle who will be dming on dragon's duel who did that you know in C in our next series doing a bit of dming on the on the darkest timeline secret spoilers there uh, but you can know that by now uh, but yeah kyle is incredible at running that sort of campaign and i also mm -hmm. saw it in another one shot i was a part of as a, a load of kobolds and doing that sort of narrative uh, with the lovecraft uh, D, D group who are now part of check these out they do the same and it's so people are trying to fix combat <laughs> for the streaming yeah. world so I, I i'm not sure if i think I don't know. I seem to feel like people want it, but then are people using it is the question. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a lot of times we say we want something, but actually when it comes down to it, do we actually engage with it? I, I, I don't know. That would be interesting I, to see. I, I, that's a good point, because obviously not everyone who, who streams maybe plays in... Oh, or not, sorry, not yeah. everyone that plays watches a stream, for example. Yeah. Like my home game, we we did stream it, and then we've obviously moved it offline through mm. pandemic stuff. I, but mm. again, it's still the same thing. And I, see, I watch a lot of streams that are role play heavy and stuff but obviously some groups are like we just want to fight we just want to yeah. do the thing and because obviously as we've said D&D &D is a, a combat system and stuff so there's something like while beyond the witch like which i again something i know we're going to talk about a little bit later on is that where it says like there is the option for no combat you also yeah. have like an undertale thing does that appeal to people and i wonder if that appeals to people who uh, aren't fussed about combat mechanics mm. um, maybe people who are a little bit younger who don't want to be they want to roll lots of dice but they don't want to be like ah tracking hit points yeah. I mean I don't know I'm making a lot of assumptions here that's the only thing I'd no, say no I think that's but, it I think that's why I'm, yeah. I'm can't really make any and I think that's what I'm so I'm, mm. I'm just interested in it. what I might do is I'll try if I can in the time between this we recording and it goes out I will try and have a look and see if I can get some metrics on anything like this and see if I can put them up and say like actually the amount of people that are streamed this that and the other it doesn't mean that means anything more than no, just an indication of interest really and how well they're doing if they're actually high up the viewers or low down I, the viewers I, I don't know I wonder I wonder to an extent like what is the most like what is the most stream show I, I assume it, must it is be Curse of Strahd. Strahd. it's got to be right? Curse of Strahd so everyone must know this plot at this point but they don't I've never so watched I'm not it because I, I, I'm not, that's why I'm the not only time I've either. ever caught it is when I listen to High Rollers I fall asleep listen to High Rollers at some point and I wake up and it's on Curse of Strahd and I'm like oh yeah, shit I can't listen to this <laughs> Um, yes. But it'd be interesting to see, like, something. Not that Kai Rollers is boring and I fall asleep. It's just that no. I put it on and I'm a person who gets up at five o'clock in the morning sometimes and then goes to bed at one o'clock, so I might just fall asleep whenever I've got five minutes. I, uh, you, you listen to people having fun. That's what I do all the time when I when I go to sleep listen to podcasts. But I do, going back to it, I, if you look at all the adventures that have been released, I'm sure that people have done, like, uh, Horde the Dragon Queen or the Rise of Tiamat and all of a sudden, mm. like, I want, and, like, I'm sure there was stuff about, like, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, which, again, yeah. really interesting, like, concept, yeah. this sort of alien, this sort of, um, oh, what's it called, like, 30 Days of Night or whatever it was, like, mm. um, John Carpenter's The Thing, the thing. that sort of thing. That's yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one I was trying to think of. Like, I, that, that, again, horror I setting. Felt there was a the big, I think actually that felt like there was, when that came out, there was lots of people that were running a Rhyme of the Frost Maiden uh, game. 100% I feel like that happened mm -hmm. I think yeah. that, I just do I'm sure it just feels like when that came out I that's what I'm saying there was lots of people going jumping on that we're going to do that but maybe it was because that's when people started the pandemic and that's when people were jumping on streaming a lot more and doing actual plays so I don't know maybe that's the case I, I, again I'm going to try and do some some metrics yeah I think that'd be good all right, Hamilton, what is your second thing? So my second one, I had a teaser for it, is yeah. this show. This show. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. Um, it's got to be because you came on my show and yes. um, uh, in March of it's this really year. Really early on. I yeah, know, it feels like March, it's been ages. This is a while ago. April, maybe. It might have been April, but either way. And then, and then I yeah, I'd only... You just called back to me like looking for people to guest on the show and I, yeah. I don't think 
I might have been get I definitely had you in my subscribe list because I looked once for a DM's book club, like a book show. Ah, but yeah. I did it because I was looking for people talking about Forgotten Realms books, not about like, you know, as in <laughs> like the novels. Oopsie. You know, that's why I kinda of, but then I had it there and I kinda of listened to one and I did enjoy it. And then you came on the show and then um literally after you came on the show, I was like, okay, I'm, I better listen to this properly. And then I basically listened to all of them in about the space of uh, I don't know, like three days or so, because yeah, I had sorry. loads. Of, it's <laughs> right. No, it's fine. It's because I had. It was literally at like one of those times when I had at work, like one of those jobs that I just needed to just. I was doing just really quite technical detail. I could just be getting on with. I just knew what I was doing. I was just copying and pasting pretty much, but not but more complicated than that. Let's say, and then I had a really long drive to uh, a couple of places on my own in the car, so I like listened to them. Then, like one job interview I went to mm. is it just is in my mind is when I go for think of that job interview it's the one where you're doing your NPC wizard uh, character maker with Ryan you know uh, the book you're going through the book which is one of my favorite episodes yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that one because I was like I wouldn't if it was me and you doing it I'd be like I don't trust this person one bit from the beginning you know when the the yeah. The, oh, the apprentice yeah, I feel yeah. like nah, the apprentice and it's like I open I open my thing and it is a ring inside and even I was like really <laughs> really yeah a ring of like like death or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's like but um yeah, no uh, yeah well and the same from my side of it as well again like uh like I really enjoyed doing uh, DM's book club over lockdown I've sort of said it before like I really struggled to get into reading for for leisure anymore just mm. because it's like oh I should be doing something else and I'm like, so I, I got into the habit of like read something to take you away from this take away from the screen and yeah. make notes about it and it had to be non-fiction and I was like well I've got yeah. all these bloody D&D &D books uh I need to to do something yeah. and so yeah starting it up and then as you said, like coming on to Dragon's Jewel, having such so much fun, and then I was like, "Oh, you know your, you know your D and D stuff. You'll be a great." <laughs> like, you know, and then yeah, and then there's just sort of born out of just being great creative stuff. And I, I and I, I've talked to other people about this as well. This idea of like we're all in the same space, and you know when it's like, "Oh, should I start another actual play podcast and all that sort of thing?" And I think the answer is do it, and then join a Discord or join a, a forum or something like that, and talk to the other creators because yeah, hundred percent. Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone is going to go. Oh, the edit this week was really hard, or yeah. I lost half the things, and, and just having someone to be like, "I've got an idea. Can I bounce it around?" Like I've I really enjoyed our chats, like lunchtime chats, where we've just gone. Here's all the stuff. What do you think? And I'm like, it's great. Yeah. What do you yeah. think of this? And you're like, it's great. It's just nice to have someone who's excited <laughs> no. about it. We've had it for as well when when you're I'm about to run this campaign. I'm going to do this to them, and you, all you need is that person to go, ooh. And you're like, yes, yeah. I've told exactly. somebody. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, it is so good, and uh, that's the thing. And like, if you want a Discord to join, join our Discord, and we're happy to yeah. talk to you about all these fun things because oh, that's what we want to talk about. Um, but yeah, and 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 you picked up on the other thing that I put down as my like two A's and two B's, which <gasps> is like. I put creating the domain of a delight and all the creation episodes. So I, yeah. you already covered that. But the other one was like the historic D&D &D settings and, op you know, like forcing me to, because I've wanted to read Spelljammer Same. for years. And we and like, because of this, I've done it. I've read it and I'm like, yeah. I love it. Great. And, I think, and, and that's, that's the other thing as well. Because I, I obviously, when, when I initially wanted to do this, I was like, I've got all these fifth edition books. And I, I've never thought to myself, oh, this, this should limit me to the source book. So when I've had guests on saying, oh, well, I've got, an idea but it's not in an official book it's a dm's guild or it's mm. it's an, another rpg game yeah. i've gone brilliant i yeah. want to talk about it because i because ultimately as as people know through listening and watching the show we're very passionate about you know these sort of things and it's just, it's just nice mm. to hear someone else talk about being passionate and be going i actually really like that idea mm. i'm gonna make a note of that and and that's the whole point of it it's like i, I feel like dm's club is a bit of a, a book club is a bit of a misnomer it, i do think of it as a gm's club in a sense and, and yeah. pulling things in like i mean we've read stuff like uh the the hero's feast cookbook you yeah. know we've i've we've read poetry on this you know we've done a mm. whole lot of stuff and i just i just that's the thing for me is like whilst it is like maybe fifth edition uh, centric just now mm. mostly because it's popular and i've got the books but also like i really enjoyed like spell Jammer. i enjoyed ghost walk yeah uh, i can't wait to dive in and do more uh, classic mm. settings and see how yeah. it compares because obviously they're going to be probably re-released re and stuff like that and be like mm. what's changed what why you know why yeah. is this so why was this so popular and what was what can we bring in from that so absolutely mm. all for that 100 percent. yeah i think that was it and i think the other one i put was the the just the the fact that it's opened up to more of a community of people as well which is the other part that we talked where you talked about as well so i'm just that i'm just reading my notes again but it no. was that sort of like just the fact that the book club has meant me talking about these things which has meant i've had engagements with 
people like uh, Sean K. Reynolds about Ghost Walk and talking to, as I said, Ed, Ed uh, Greenwood about um, about uh, the spell jump stuff that they did. But like just those ability. But then, but that's fine. But really, the more important ones are in the chats, like all the chats that we've had whilst oh. this is going out, and all those people like Derek and uh, I'm just I'm gonna add Gobbo and Gobbo, yeah. uh, um, uh, Pixie Will, and yeah. uh, sorry, what did you say? Will from uh, R D W uh, yes R, R- Will D- yes Will and Chris got borrow brick Chris. road has been on there lot uh, uh, there's going to be people we forget which is going to be awful which I know it's going to be awful people by we saying. didn't name drop them <laughs> but also but like from but they know who they them. are but they it's, know who they are it's, it's well, we talk, like, like I love the fact that we you know we talked about when we want to do mini painting at some point yes. we want, we've talked about our meal deal lunches in yes. the chat and that has spilled over I love that because that feels like not only is it it's our thing that our yes. community is like this is what I got as a meal deal, but like, ooh, yes. judgy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. I forgot to post mine today, actually. I had a really <gasps> good one. I had a tandoori chicken wrap from that, my new local, which just does these homemade ones. They're really good. Oh, and mm. McCoy's special piri piri chicken chips. Crisps. Oh, that's new. I didn't yeah. know. Anyway, that's a different, I'm sure we'll have to do like a D&D meal time <laughs> episode at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just that whole thing about it has been really great. And it's like one of the highlights of just every, like, as I said, all we talk about the, I think that's the thing as well, community of this year, like not just through this, but just like a lot of things that I've, I didn't join Twitter until uh, August 2020 properly. Really? Yeah. Wow. Before then I'd been on here like once or twice this was just twitter was this thing that i just mm. never i did i've done instagram i used to do a lot of instagram and was big into like the warhammer scene on instagram for a few years and then like before that it was just instagram for like art and architecture stuff and mm. you know and really into tumblr for a, when that was be- began when i did like a lot of skateboarding stuff when i was younger and did skateboarding i know such a loser but <laughs> anyway i then I, so i only joined twitter and like, it's only through this like year and a half that i've met all these amazing people that yeah. have just been this year that's just been like it's, that's been one of the highlights. So I'm, I'm counting that as all of one of two. That's number two. That, so, yeah. that is fair. And I, I yeah. completely agree. I think I've been very lucky in this pandemic. I know not everyone has been, but I've enjoyed yeah. being able to still do stuff like this, uh, you know, mm. record online, do role playing games online. And I know mm. it's not for everyone, but I've really flourished and I've realized that, you know, I can do uh, actual plays with people from around the world and we can that's, make it yeah, work. And, and we wouldn't get that normally, you know, and mm. and also you can tell people to mute, unmute themselves. You can tell yeah. people to stop eating into the, into the <laughs> mic. No, but I, I mean, I've had a game. I had a game uh, on Dragon's Jewel where I had someone in Singapore, someone in Taiwan, someone in Bristol, like 10 miles away, and someone in London, and then someone in America, you know, like all on the same show. And Amazing. you're just like... What is this like? I'm, and I talk to people like in the office and say like, "Oh yeah, my friend in America." And it's just like I've now got a friend and my friend in Singapore, or my friend. And I'm like, "How is this? This is the world I live in, which is amazing. Mm. Like, how great is that? Like all it, these worldwide." Um, it, com- it comes to that point where it's it's like, "Oh, my internet friends," and that used to be such a horrible. Well, yeah. oh, you got friends on the internet, you know. And mm. actually, so what? Like, I started mm. meeting some of my internet friends that I made in last year in person, and I'm sure at some point Hamilton will have to meet have in to. person. Yeah. <laughs> a live DMs book club we have to do oh, that oh it's gonna happen mm. but you know it's that sort of thing where it's like I don't see like I feel like I've known you for yonks at this point like yeah. I know we talk every week so, but that's the thing like and just because we are passionate about this one thing and we talk and stuff like that and it doesn't mm. matter that we've never met in person like so what like and I think that it just it's, yeah it's really opened up my mind this last year and a half about like Hey, meeting people who are sharing the same passion, who are willing to listen, mm. and, and not be like overly critical or or anything like just about. Oh, I like that idea, and having that collaboration is yeah. just really up on my mind. So, oh, very good choice. Very really good. like that. So, what's your third one then? Okay, so my third one uh, is a bit cheaty because it's still another supplement, but I I'm going to put in Minsk and Boo's so Journal good. of Villainy. Yeah. So it's another supplement. Uh, obviously, came out for Extra Life uh, very, very recently. And you know what? The reason I put it in as a sort of thing is that I never really considered. Uh, and again, this is a more of a naive uh, DM thing. I never really considered how to put in like cities or how to. What do I need mm. to make a city other than uh, it's uh, it's going to have this, so it's going to be this size mm. and stuff like that. And we have created like settlements and stuff before on DM's Book Club. But I feel like this is like oh, 
here is a section where it's like, here's here's a population, here's a little bit of lore and history, here's some interesting things of note. And I was just mm. the way it put it. Um, and whilst I, what it made me do is I, I want more. And I think that's what a good book does. It's, it's written enough mm. to be like, here's some ideas, but you go and do more. And I think all the stuff in it, like it had the two, um, I can't remember their, their names off the top Bode, of my head. Bodhi, was it Bodhi? Bode, Bode, no. Um, the, I was thinking the city that's in the tree. Oh, the city. Oh, well. sign. Uh, Oh, I'm mean, about to say an architecture building in Norway, uh, sign at Salo, <laughs> which no, is not. No. It was uh, like, since in oh, Sandar, San... something like that. Um, but where, where it's like half of it is in the shadow fell, and there's a whole history in that, and then there's the one that's in the underdark mm-hmm. with uh, our favourite uh, planar Apple. merchants. Uh, oh, the Nyogi, uh, yeah, the Nyogi. Nyogi. Um, and an Abelinth uh, yeah. down there as well. And again, these little, little tidbits, and it was just very short, and I just. Everything about the city stuff was really interesting, and then going on to it, this idea—excuse me—this idea of henchmen as mm. well. And I had—and I know we didn't go into it when we looked at it ourselves, but the henchmen section of it was really detailed and really interesting, yeah, like really characters ones, yeah. and stuff like that, uh, which I think would have made really good bosses, for example, mm. uh, or villains even. And it, it, what that book did for me is that it opened up this idea of like, oh, what is a villain? And then we went on and did our own thing, yeah. and not because like. I mean, I was a bit like, mm, I don't see those as villains. I see them as world-ending bosses. Yes. But, that, but, that, but that was really good, I think. I think yeah. having those there, there as, as examples, and I go, that's great. I want to do something different. And that's what a good supplement or a source book should be. It's, it's a jumping-off mm. point. It's not law or anything like that. But I just thought, yeah, the henchman section of it was just really interesting. And again, amazing imagery and, and all that sort of thing. And the cities. and It, it just, was incredible. All, yeah. Mm. All, all about it, I just thought... Again, and I, just, I also quite liked how it just got released and then unreleased and then released again because yeah. it's like, I, and I guess that's yes. not necessarily like it's a faux pas for sure. But I just thought, oh, I'm now intrigued. What's going yes. on here? So it's yeah. worth noting as well that they've made an adventure using a lot of the people in it uh, that's also on DM's Guild. So if you are interested in, mm. if you find it good, it, you know, if you're looking for an adventure that uses some of those people, there's uh, there is that as well. Now they've made it, which I think mm. was worth noting to yeah. promote them. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, no, I really love that. Minx and Boo was one of my favourites uh, as well. I, 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 well, as I said, I, as I, the first one like adventure that I DM and I talk about it a lot is Dragon Heist. I talk about it loads, and it was, and it's obviously water deep. And I use a lot of DM supplements when I was making that to find DM skill supplements. That is to find ways to like build up those adventures. And I came up with a, a few myself that came off that. But it was a really, I found. I really enjoyed an urban adventure. I found it really fun, and I think they are great places to be in because a lot of a lot of people live in them, and we have a lot of experience our own selves of being in them. But they, mm. I felt it was like GTA meets D and D. That's what yes. Dragon Heist is, and I made it as such. I had the map, and I did like I made a Photoshop file that had little stars of wherever they'd been and where there were mm. jobs to do. I made them exactly like it was D and D. It was GTA D and D. So when I opened up every game that was like we we're not like in in media res if you know what i mean in the middle of something i'd be like yeah. okay here's the map so you've got to go and see Raynar never Ember here which is like an nv and you've got like which is at the the his like club and then you've got like you've also got the breg and darth d- d- quest to do you've also mm-hmm. got your um uh, zentarum quest to do you've also got these and you know had all the and there's your tavern up here that you own you know and it yes. was all little things like that and it was just That's like so cool it was so much fun and i, I think city and count city urban adventures are good fun and i think mm-hmm. more ability to have more different urban settings rather than the classics that we all know it's great, you know, like I, the yeah. Beth Carla and stuff like that. That's, that's like such a good point. Again, I, I've not really read much into Dragon Heist because I do have a friend who's promising me at some point to run it for us. But again, I, it, it was. But we were talking about it before about popular things. Dragon Heist was really big on the streams. Like people mm-hmm. were playing it left, right, and centre so because it was so different. And yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I absolutely adore the fact it's GTA themed. The map. I just. Of course, of course, that makes sense. So, yes. oh, I love that. That's, that's, I mean, that's and you can play thing. it four different ways. There are four different baddies, so you can yeah. you could watch one and not, and I recommend the high rollers one because they've if you want to watch it and you don't want to be too spoiled, is that it, uh, Mark Sherlock Holmes changes it enough, yes, that it isn't exactly and and when I ran it, I made it sigil the dragon the, the dragon heist in the end anyway. So like anyone can make it their own way. So I think if you if you're interested to watch what listen to listen to watch one that's one to watch if you don't want to be overly spoiled by it absolutely absolutely no completely agree 
All right, Hamilton, what's your final, final, like, yes, this has been 2021. This has been D&D in a nutshell, I guess. D&D in, oh, in a nutshell. Oh, jeez, that's not what I, I mean, that's that's really putting the pressure on. I think what I said in the last one was D&D in a nutshell, which was the the, cl- the collaborative one. I'd say just my, um, my third one was going to be just the, the promise of, of more coming and actually yeah. which is i know it's not the year in review but i think it's been what well, it's a bit of a combination of actually a lot of things we've already said so that's why it's a bit of uh, we've sort of over- said it already which was the the non-combat the role-playing heavy focus and this mm-hmm. sort of move of D into something different so that is was my third one so i feel like i need a new one <laughs> because no, i think that's fair but that was kind of like the the biggest the, the biggest thing. I think, um, I think the creations that we've done has been fun, and being open to that, uh, creating more elements, and being like, I think having, um, I think something that is that. Uh, the D and D books have done, and with, we've talked about the rolling tables. I well, know we've already sort of talked about this again. It's that sort of. Um, I think even just having it as like an exercise that a DM does every once in a while that's mm. just not related to your game is something that I've really enjoyed uh, from mm. this show. It's just like making something because I might use it, I might not use it, but just being creative for yes. an hour and a half has just been um, a lot of fun. And I think something that yeah. I'm going to try and bring into my sort of like like structure i guess mm. of like let's just come up with something uh, if i've got when i have free time uh to to, <laughs> to, to just like just think uh, just it's made me start thinking about like oh how would i make that more a little yeah. bit more which has been quite quite an, an enjoyable experience but yeah really we did cover my third one my proper <laughs> third one over all of them so that no, was but it. i i think i do i do see that i think what i get with um with uh, I, I did a book ages ago, which is like um, oh, it's called The Artist Way, which is, I will say at the top is a very airy fairy sort of like how to yep. unblock your creative pause, you know that sort of thing. But what it did give me advice was that every week you spend, you should put your take yourself on an artist date, mm-hmm. and what that means is that um, you block out a little bit of time, a minimum of two hours, and you go do something for yourself. Now, whether that is going to an art museum, going for a walk, uh, painting, or anything like that, you always have it at the same time every week, and you don't cancel it for anything. And yeah. what I started doing in that is, uh, I started doing that for the 12 weeks, and I would play solo RPGs. Mm. And actually doing that, and to be fair, it was content creation as well, hashtag anything is content for what am I rolling, but I realized that allowing myself to be like, okay, this is uninterrupted creation time. And I think that's the thing, sometimes I do, we do get the thing going, oh, you don't need to prep anything. Don't be, you know, just improvise. There's a truth in that, but also there is a little bit of joy where it's sitting down and just trying something. Mm. There's always that thing where you're about to start and you go, oh, I don't know where to start. Like, we've done this when writing assignments and stuff, you're like, oh, oh, I hate it. I can't write stuff like that. The minute that's you get a, going. Yeah, the minute you get going and you just go, don't worry about editing, just write, mm. just write, you know, type something down or, or put it down on paper and then go back to it after like half an 100%. hour. Or like it makes such a difference. And I, I definitely have found joy in spending that time just sitting down and doing something for me. And mm. I think that's what we need to do from that sort of like, when all these creations mm. stuff, I think it's a great idea, but like, do it for yourself. Don't do it because, oh, I've got a game coming yeah. up. Oh, I should prep. Yeah. I think yeah. do it for yourself. And then you can be like, you might, they like said, you might never use it, but also mm. you might use some of it. And I think that's the, the key 100%. thing. Have you heard of the term pantsing and planning? No, what is that? Okay, it's a writing term. It's a novel writing term. Now, I, before I got really back into D&D, I did lots of like writing, like creative writing as a way just to keep, I'm not going to release it. It's just, no, it's there. No. It's, but it was just like, that was my like outlet just to like have a creative outlet that was just, just for myself. And I do miss it. And, but that's D&D sort of took over and made, I was like, actually, this is something I could be doing with all this stuff I'm doing. And I, I use a lot of the stuff I've made in there as part of mm-hmm. like his ideas that I've got in the background if I need some sort of character or something like that. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, but the pantsing is is by the seat of your pants. That's what it means. Right. So I've, it's and planning is planners are people that are like. Okay, I'm going to make my story. I'm going to I'm going to nov- I'm going to create the novel like uh, chapters. I'm going to make the the story beats, and I'm going to figure this out. And I tried writing that way, and it's just not me, right? Because I'd spend no. hours and days and months planning, 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 and then I'll get bored. Yeah. 
the only time I ever got beyond 20,000 words of a novel was pantsing. And that was because, which is the term, okay? It's called pant. You can Google it. It's not, I'm not just making this up. It's an actual no. term. But it's like just writing. I just sat down and, and this came after playing some D&D and I thought like, okay, I'm just going to make a story and this is my cat. And I just started with a line and I just kept going and kept going. And then I built this thing and then and then I kept moving. Like one chapter I wrote just moved over here and then that chapter moved over there. And it was like, and it just became a bit of a jumble, but it needed editing afterwards. But the flow and the way that I could mm. get things out of like writing was so much better. So I think this is what I was talking about. That's what I was getting at. Just go out there and just start something, as you're saying as well. It's like a really good... I agree. I agree with yep. what you're saying. It's a really good idea. Let's. We're both agreeing. <laughs> we're both. We're both passionate about the same things. Yes. Go us. Go um, us. Yeah. I think, but I also there's. I guess there's that sort of thing like having an accountability buddy or anything like that. Like I know there's like yeah. stuff like. Uh, I can never say it right. The the write a novel in November one. Uh, mm. Namiko, I think it's mm. called. Um, there's one that's called Twenty Eight Plays Later in February. We write a play every day. I, they're short Ooh. ten minute plays. Don't you don't they're not like a, but they but they're also like topics and themes. So yeah. someone was telling me about them. That one of the ones that you only had a vocab of a hundred words. Uh and oh, you know, wow. and, yeah, I love you know, those those there's a really term for those things. Uh, uh but when it's like overly um, cause like in architecture, yeah, like, it's something we always get told like constraints are the most important thing to creative endeavors. Like, mm. you know, so this is an architecture thing is like you've got to focus on what your constraints and opportunities are, and then you get your conceptual basis for what your thing is going to be, and then you create it. And then if you have a good set of understanding of your constraints and opportunities, and a good understanding of what your conceptual basis is, then you just layer on top of that. Then you can just figure out how the functionality works easily because you know where things are going to go because you know like the light comes in from the south you know that the view is going to be out that way and you know that you want this the concept of it to be this uh, it's about layers of transparency or something like that so it becomes very easy for you to then just make a building like that's the thing and it's the same with anything like you're just saying yeah exactly if you have these constraints like you can only use 10 words or something like that and you get much more creative power out of constraining yourself 100% I agree with that love that mm -hmm. so there you go. Yeah, do it. Bollocks. I love people. it. No, <laughs> but it's true. It is very true. Well, so that's sort of our year in review. Okay. I guess just judging on time. Yes. Is this, what's the, I guess, the one thing that you're really looking forward to for uh, if you are going to be existing in 2022 20, and beyond? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As Chris Perkins is currently. So. He's currently doing. <laughs> I am going to say I am, it's, it's it's, it's going to be a part two parter. <laughs> then go for okay. it. Go for it. Yeah. I'm looking for both the looking forward so much to the new settings, new new settings, the old new settings, yeah. and the new old settings, and whatever they mean by new types of gaming, be yes. that minis, VTT, yeah. or whatever we think it could be. I'm still mm. holding out for that spelljammer mini thing. I think I've called it. I think I've called it. I think, I think you, I think you, well, as soon as you said it, I was like, of course it's going to be that. Like, how could it not be anything else? Like, I know we said it was like a virtual tabletop sort of thing. I'm yeah. now like, nah, sod that. It's minis. Like, <laughs> Hero Forge, yeah. merge with D&D Beyond, merge with everything. It's done. But yeah, it's no, I, that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I, I am mm. looking for, I'm hoping for some more multiverse, Spelljammer, Planescape stuff just to come back because mm. it's exciting to me and I really like yeah. them. So I'm up for that. And I want the art that they're going to bring more than anything yeah. as much actually planescape doesn't need new art because dita ridlitzi is amazing don't need to re, you don't need to redo that just copy paste that but spell jammer i'd love to and again i love them things but i just think the modern three-dimensional era we live in will just up that mm -hmm. to another level that's all definitely what about you what's your number one <sighs> number one it's tricky because i know there's going to be another anthology out at some point yeah so because i'm really going into their one shot stuff and i which i mm. think i'm like yes great and that's going to be more diverse writing and more content stuff. for you <laughs> oh, more loads more content for me um i know strixhaven has been released today yes. so can't wait for that because yeah, again it's I just a different kind of adventure like it's set in an institution you know and mm. we know it's going to have the harry potter vibes we get that you know but it's just like something that we always want i think the one thing i've written down and i and maybe it's just me as a player um as well as sort of this idea of like here's an option for uh, no combat at all we've had that with wild beyond which like i think that's a great idea i'll be interested to see it pans out and i think the D, &D team are very interesting to see how that pans out mm. if there's going to be more uh less combat heavy adventures 
what are they going to replace it with? Is it going to be more social encounters and rules for social encounters? Mm -hmm. I would love to see more puzzles and more ways for players to think outside the box. That's not like, oh, I'm not getting my way. Get the sword out and stab. Like Tasha's came up with like at least ten puzzles um, for you to try, which I have tried, and they are really good. But uh, they are very similar in a sense. It's like oh, we count into the word for a couple of them. So I'd love to see more examples of riddles and stuff like that. And I say this, I know how hard it is to come up with a riddle. <laughs> I know how hard it is to come up with a puzzle. But I would love to see more ways. If we're not doing combat, which is mm. the main. D and D thing. Let's face it. You know, it, you have you have to hit and damage and all that sort of thing. What else are we, we replacing it with? They've already talked yeah. about, like I think you mentioned it before, the 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 spell casting. They're simplifying that, so it's mm. like for for DMs, which I think is fantastic. Like we saw that recently with yeah. uh, fizz bands as well. They showed it in there. What what other environmental or other Ways yeah, to I know what you mean. Like, how are they going to? No, yeah, I agree. It's like, how are you going to build a system that deals with not combat, or are we just going to accept that there is no longer a system and that D and D is not? It, there is a system for combat, and then there is the fact that this is really just. Hmm. It, 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 the question becomes like, is it D and D anymore? If there's no system, but I think the point mm -hmm. is that it's a campaign setting so actually really that's what they are creating they're more creating mm -hmm. like here are worlds for you to in invest time in there is so yes. much law like there yes. is a wealth of law that we've we can, we've seen in this year of of reviewing Absolutely. things that yeah. maybe that's just what they will accept and maybe maybe they'll add more they will give us ways to play like here's mm. ship combat here's maybe they'll give us Maybe they'll even give us a, a way to deal with narrative combat. Like I, I, I could imagine, yeah. you know, that would be a really interesting thing. I think it'd be very interesting to do that because obviously there's some great RPGs out there. Like you said, you talked about the Wheel of Time one. Um, mm. I can think of several ones which are just like token based. We got, I'm going to take mm. this move and mm. give a token and all that sort of thing. City and of Mist, we we looked into a lot. City of Mist, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think um, very narrative combat. The style of play, you know, it's just yeah. And you think about all the things that get like you, like um, I don't actually, I don't know if it was shared in our in our Discord, but the, it was like recently it was like here are uh, th Thanksgiving themed um, turkeys as D and D monsters. Yes, we did. Yeah, we right? did share them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would look forward to like when we have a D and D monster and it's flipped the other way around. Rather than bringing something into D and D, what can we take out of D and D and put it into a different system? Because like you said, yeah. all this law stuff, um, like the ghost walk stuff. Easily, we can take that out and put it into like the cipher system or just a, yeah. a, a narrative system. And I, I guess it's tricky because, like, obviously, you know, D and D's built up such a, a following and stuff. And as soon as you change the system, people are like, "Well, oh, I don't know." Well, it's like so if you've sure. got rid of natural twenties and natural ones, it's like that's fundamental. So, like, could you yeah. get rid of a D twenty from D D and D? Yeah. It feels like you can't. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I'd be interested to try it with, like, I don't know if you've used dice pools before, where it's like you roll a number of dice. So, like, if mm. your um, your skill is, like, I don't know, plus three, so you're like, okay, you get one plus three, so four, roll that. How many sixes do you get? Mm. That's the number of successes. Easily, yeah. you could do that. But again, it's that making sure the players are on board and stuff like that. So I, I will be very interesting, but again, maybe that's a. The problem with that, perhaps, is that there's so many indie RPGs out there. There's so many yeah. systems for that. They, you don't want to be suddenly tramping on their tr toes at all and I don't and I don't think Wizard of that either so but yeah I think there's going to be a big shift in how we see combat in D&D because of the, the ways it's streamed I think to a extent that's going to shape quite a lot of it but also but I think also people at yeah. home just getting getting like the slog of like the four hour of combat that you're like no, sometimes no. it even just it's just like I'm, 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 for a night I'm, out yeah and, may <laughs> and maybe it is going to be that it's just going to be a lot less admin on the DM side and the players still have all their admin perhaps because I, yeah. you know how how boring it can be. Sometimes you're like, I don't know. I maybe forgot this person's turn. I don't know. I mean, maybe they introduced A D and D and D and D. Like I don't know. Like I don't know if that's the thing. But it's like here's uh, combat D and D, and here is basic D and D. I don't know if that. You know what I mean? Like here's rules like D and D, and here so, is advanced. Yeah, Dungeons like almost having like, a combative like adventurous yeah. league, and then a narrative. which I wouldn't want to call it advanced because that's like oh, it's better to one's better than the well, other. But I and mean, that, like, that's it. That's the issue because some people will be like, oh, you're only going to do narrative. Basic, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, it, but they could at least say like here is rules for you know you want to play combat heavy. This is what rules A, and if you want to play narrative combat, here's like. Yeah. 
I don't know, like when you go into a starting screen, here's like when you. I, however, yeah. when I play video games now that I'm uh, older and have no time, I just go let's turn it onto super easy. Just I want to hear the, I want to play the story. I Do you know what I mean? That. Yeah, you don't want to be like it's the same thing with, uh, with GTA as well. It's like yeah. I'm sat in traffic. That's that great Daryl Brian sort of joke going. Yeah. I I just want to get to the story. I, I have to lock things. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, again. Each to their own, for sure. But I wouldn't mm. be interested to see if if they're taking away uh, as a trial thing, no combat as an option, mm. as an option, as I was going to say, mm. rather than yeah. a, a full thing. What is it they're going to put into place? I'd love to see more puddle, puzzles and riddles. But I know that's mm. not for everyone, so yeah. yeah. Well, I think well. that's that's that seems like we've done our very one hour. How you can do one year in one hour is that's what we've done it is we've done. Done well, it. and i guess just to finish off thank you so much hamilton for coming along with this crazy ride i know mostly it was like shall we do this and i went yes thank you let's get on that straight away <laughs> but i appreciate it and it's been such a wonderful oh. we, i mean we only started doing streams like this in september late yeah. september we did a few yeah we did a few like specials didn't we at the end of your season two and then mm -hmm. and then somehow i we started doing the whole thing in season three yeah i can't remember i don't know uh i, I can't remember it's it time is a weird soup it, <laughs> it, it is a weird soup so and so. Uh, yeah, but it's been, no, I wanted to say in return, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for even just like, I didn't even know, it's just being a fan to being someone on the show is kind of kind of crazy. And just, but it, on top of it, it's just being like, I give me the opportunity to do all the things we talked about, which is just being, read some more D&D and enjoy it more. It's been great. Right, right back at you. Well, Hamilton, let's, let's sign off. Let's go. What's happening yeah. at Roleplay Factory? What's what's happening over oh, the Christmas period? If well, you know. over the Christmas period. Well, there should be. I don't. It depends on what's happened. There should be a. We'd have created both the characters. We'd have given them some backstories. You might have seen those as well. And then there, it's weird. This is quite an advance for recording this. I don't know yes. exactly. But in January, I can be very clear in saying that there will be two actual plays two actual plays that will run alongside the campaign uh, the game show so what we're going to do is every saturday at 9 p.m uk time 4 p.m american time there will be the shattered realm actual play uh, which will be my dm'd campaign which yeah. will be you taking one half of the characters personas with the sort of this is our european based players because of time zones i'll be running those and they'll be on saturday nights and then on fridays at 10 p.m uh uk time 5 p.m eastern time there will be the darkest timeline which will be dm'd by kyle who is originally Ooh. from brain plane at allies where the other half will be and they get split into a multiverse and it's going to be basically <clears throat> one is going to be much darker the darkest timeline surprisingly where the world what? is all still terrible the shattered realm is where everything is everything's going wrong but it's not because of what's happening in this other thing and they need to find their way back and then every last saturday of the month there will be a game show so we'll have a break from so it's a bit like what critical role doing At the end of every month we won't have any actual plays we're going to play some game shows we're going to get new guests on and they will become guest characters npcs player characters for the actual plays and that's how we're going to do it look at all that content Woo, amazing <laughs> Yeah, but I got a second DM, so I only have to yeah. do one of them. <laughs> so, Twice the content, half the work. All good. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. What good. about All you? What What's going to be? What's new for 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 twenty twenty two? 2022 gosh it feels so far away but it is it is so close um so yes uh, my name is fiona i run the what am i rolling podcast which is a twice monthly rpg one-shot podcast as always it is going very very well we've got uh we've got numer numenera god i can't see that right yeah. uh we've probably got um uh, we've probably got some solo rpgs and we've got some mm. other bits in the in the ground probably salvage union's probably gonna come out this idea of um Basically, uh, if you think like sort of Borderlands slash mechs, mm. but without without the war game minis, it's all sort of RP. So that'd be quite fun. Cool. That's just got released on Kickstarter, so that's all very good. And yeah, apart from that, um, I'll be doing some sort of improv sci-fi show called Galactic oh, yes. Implosions. Yeah, um, in in the in in the person in January, hopefully in person, um, which is going to be an in-person show, but it's also going to be streamed and put in VR as well for those people who like Galaxy Quest, Red Dwarf, similar sort of vibe. Uh, yeah, gotta get get your get your headsets on for that because that's gonna be really good. And yeah, I'm sure I'll be posting all about that close to the time, but that'll be in January with those dates. And awesome. then just just to finish off, hey, it's Christmas, so probably all the all the shots will be shut. But in in the new year, you're like, oh, I wanna get into role playing. 
well, you can get 10% off the Third Space Gaming, which is your friendly local game store in Burnley. Uh, for your for your first order, just type in the offer code DMBC, and you've got to do it with those hand gestures, DMBC. <laughs> uh, and then you can buy it on anything you want. Um, hey, maybe if you want to wait, and then the Molokainen presents uh, Monsters of the Multiverse. That hopefully should be out at the end of January, but who knows? Uh, maybe. Uh, there'll be alt covers. There'll be the gift set alternate which covers. Which is the most beautiful alt cover ever made, by the way, so, so far. It's so pretty. Um, mm. It's ones you're going to leave on your coffee table and people are going to go what's that yeah. you go it's my obsession um, <laughs> my life my life uh, minis uh, water terrain you can get it all there so that's the NPC into uh, the checkout it's 10% off your first thing at Third Space Gaming and that's it I think I think that's everything that is so, everything oh. so I think with that we should probably just say not only See you on the flip side. On the flip side. Of the year. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye.